Um, and the message picking up stuff that all the people saying, Bill Kelly is live. Yeah, who is this? Gonna be on your phone probably. Oh. I see somebody come on now. I'm gonna start saying something. I ain't saying nothing. I don't think nobody ain't never seen this yet. I think you hear you talk. If they do, I don't think they are because I don't think nobody on there yet. Okay. We'll see it when people go to get on there. Dale Kendall is watching. Williams, she she gonna log us into the work so Hey that doc Mr. Kim This taken care of first. Make sure everything going right first. Yeah, Mr. Melon now. Good evening, everybody. Hey, hey, everybody. Hey, Miss Rebecca. We're going to get started here about 7 o'clock, y'all. I think we got a few more minutes. Mr. Bo. Or coach, a hey, coach, Miss M, like Mr. Josh in town, a hey, Miss M. What's going on, Daddy, man? Hey, Coach, how you doing, man? Good to have you tonight, man. Got 
Y'all make sure y'all hit them share buttons now and invite your friends because we want to try to get everybody, everybody we can get tonight because we feel like God has given me a word for everybody. So don't be shy about hitting that, that share button and then make sure you invite your friends. Hey, Mr. Paul. She's saying, hey, hey. Miss Elaine Taylor. How you doing, Sonetta? We're going to be starting here in about another minute or two. Hey, hey. Miss Jones. We're gonna try to Mr. Wilson ask the question what do got going on got going on. We're gonna try to give you a word from the Lord, man. That's what we're gonna sit out to do. Yes, sir, I can see the messages. Paul Caldwell speaking to you, Missy Lane. How you doing, Mr. Paul? Will Carrington. Man, we can't call out all these names now. But we're glad to have all of y'all. We might yes. call them off till we get ready to start. After we get ready to start, we're just going to have to look at them and ignore them. But it's hard to ignore you seeing your name pop up there. Little less than, little less than a minute, I guess. What's up, Mr. M? Mr. T. <laughs> it's good to have everybody with us tonight. We're going to go ahead and get started. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Good evening. Hope everybody had a, had a blessed day. I'm going to have to kind of keep looking down at my notes because God been showing me so much. If I don't stay on this, I don't, if I don't stay on my notes, man, I'll be done and went off on a rabbit trail. And even with these notes, I still might get out on a rabbit trail. But anyway, my name is Jerry Taylor, and this is my wife, Elaine. We members of the Word Center Ministry located at 100 Johnson Avenue here in Talladega. The Dr. Darius Williams is our pastor, and co-pastor is, is, is First Lady Rebecca Williams. But anyway, I guess now would be a good time for me to pray to get this started because we always need to start off in prayer. So let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we come this evening just to say thank you. We thank you for allowing us this opportunity. We thank you for all the ones that you got tuned in tonight, our Father. We come right now in your son Jesus' name praying that I be able to decrease and you may increase, our Father. Help me to say the things that you want me to say. Our Father, we pray right now that your sweet spirit will take over this place and take over every place and every home that is, that is tuned in tonight, our Father. We just thank you for all that you're going to do tonight, and we pray that you would bless us with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as we speak your holy word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. A lot of people have been talking about this coronavirus, this COVID-19, and we're going to speak a little bit about that, about that this afternoon or this evening. God, it's three things that are taking place right now. And all of them are not bad. Some of them is good. We're going to get some good out of this. The devil meant it for bad, but God going to get some glory out of, out of even this COVID, COVID virus. Three things. God has slowed us down in this season. Our faith is being tested in this season. And God is getting our attention in this season. Not only is he getting his children's attention, he's getting the whole 
world's attention, especially the United States, because we really leading in this thing right now. Kind of having a little technical difficulty, but God dropped something in my spirit probably about two or three months ago. And it was God uses bad situations to shave off the hard places of our attitudes. In other words, God always or most always use bad situations to humble us. Because if he don't humble us, we're not, going, we're, not, we're not known to be very humble. But if, if we're going to be imitators of Jesus, then we have got to be humble. We got to be more humble. And like I said, most of the time he used those bad situations to kind of shave it off. He don't really knock it off. He shaves it off. He shaves it down gradually. And over a period of time and through a process, we become more humble. But it's always because, more than likely, it's because of the bad situation. I just want to look at this coronavirus from a different point tonight. Like I say, it's not all bad. It's some good going to come out of this event. It's some good going to come out of these bad days. We all know that God allowed it. So if God allowed it, then that means that it's going to be some good come out of it. Through all the bad, it's going to be a lot of good. Why, why you say that, Brother Taylor? This is why I say it, because when we look at Romans 8 and 28, let's just go right there right quick. Romans 8 and 28. I, I could quote it, but let me just look at it because so I can make sure. And we know that. I'm not there yet. But I want to get it up before I ain't get there. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. That's how I know something good going to come out of it. Because he said, if you love me and you are called according to my purpose, if you're doing what I've told you to do, then no matter what happened, he said, all things going to work together for good. He didn't say some of them. So even in this, in this COVID-19 season that we're in right now, it's going to be some good that's going to come out of this. I can already see some good coming out of it. My wife told me a few minutes ago, said so some people got more on their on they unemployment checks than they thought they was going to get. When have you ever known the government to just give you some money? I'm looking for my check to come in the mail here shortly, but I've never known the government to just give money to people. So... It's some good going to come out of this. God wants to, one of the biggest things God wants us to do, he wants us to slow down. And the reason I'm slowing down now, I just want you to feel what I'm saying about slowing down. Sometimes we, we get to take off, we're running, but let's just slow down here just for a minute. I know it might seem strange, but I'm sure right now going through this, going through this live, you can already feel a calmness coming over you right now, even as I say what I'm saying. Let's just calm down here just for a minute. Let's just slow down here for a minute. You feel that? I know you do. And the reason I'm doing this is because here a few months ago, we took five minutes. God led me to take five minutes before we opened up our meeting to just meditate and just be quiet and just pray in the spirit to yourself or have whatever you want to do. And when we did that, after those five minutes, we started and, and it, believe it or not, we got way more done in a short length of time. Because God said, acknowledge me in all your ways and I'll direct your path. But if you don't slow down enough to acknowledge him, a lot of times we go off in the wrong direction. So that's why I'm saying now, just say slow down. And another reason, the biggest reason why I'm saying it, we just why are you slowing your spirit and your mind down right now? Let's go to St. John, the 21st chapter and the 25th verse. I'm going to give you time enough to get there because I want you to see something in this. There's a message in this for us. 
St. John 21, 25. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that shall be written. Amen. And when I, got, when I read that verse and I got to thinking about that verse, I'm like, wow. He said if everything was written down that Jesus done, it said a whole world wouldn't be able to contain the books. But you know what? When we study the life of Jesus, we never see him running. We never see Jesus running, but how many times do we get in a hurry? Some of us, when we go to bed at night, our minds are running. When we get up in the morning, we're running, trying to get to work and all these things. So God is slowing us down. He done took the jobs away. He done shut the jobs down. Now, you don't have no reason to jump up and run. So he's slowing us down. And I, when I seen Jesus, when I looked at Jesus' life, and I never saw him running, and I read this scripture, I'm like, wow, we need to slow down some. So look at it now. God didn't nearly shut the whole economy down. Even President Trump saying, keeps saying, we need to get our country back open. We need to get our country back open. I agree, we probably do need to get it back open, but I believe God going to leave it shut down long enough for some people to start acknowledging him. That's why he's slowing everything down because he wants us to realize and understand who's really running this thing. Sometimes we think we're in control, but we really not. And if we don't start acknowledging God, look, we, the, the economy was running great, doing good. Then all of a sudden it go from doing good to shutting down, we need to hear the voice of God in this. But see, the ones that are that are that are that are that are God's children, we ain't got nothing to worry about. He's gonna protect us. I just believe that. He's gonna protect his children. That's what I'm saying. There's some good coming out of this because I'm looking for my check coming in the mail. But God is wanting to get our attention because he's, a lot of people are going through a lot of things right now because they've lost their job. They lost their income. So I'm sure a lot of people are on edge right now. And then I thought about something the other day. I said, man, do you realize that there are husbands and wives or or couples that may not even be married that's living together and they really not getting along. Now both of them out of work and both of them at home. Now we got to find out a way to get along. Don't somebody going to have to go outside or somebody going to have to leave. They going through some people are going through some things right now. God is using this thing to get our attention. Because you take the United States, we 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 we've been just like rebellious children. We hadn't been listening to nothing the father been telling us. We say, okay, it's okay for you two men to get married, two women, all of that kind of stuff. We just going completely against the word of God. And it's going to eventually, and it's, and it's catching up with us. We can't just do whatever we want to do. God is still on, on the throne. He's still up there. He still runs the universe. He wants us to acknowledge him as individuals and the whole nation. It's not fair for him to get us up every morning and allow us to do whatever we feel like we need to do, whether it's work or whatever we're doing, and we not even take the time to say, Lord, I thank you for allowing me to see another day when we get up. That's not fair to him. It's not fair for him to do all of that and we not even tell him thank you. But that's where we are right now. But eventually, because I know the words say, every knee was going to have to bow and every tongue was going to have to confess. So we might as well start practicing now because we're going to have to do it sooner or later. And then let him take care of us in the process. So this coronavirus and this COVID-19 stuff, all we got to do is 
get the message. And I believe he will lift this thing off of us quicker if we get the message. What is the message? Acknowledge me. Turn to me. Because he said if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll heal from heaven and I'll heal the land. We read these scriptures all the time, but how much are we putting them in effect? Another thing God is doing in this season, he's testing our faith. Yeah. It's time for the churches to take it to another level. He doesn't even put us out. I'm not going to say he, because God don't do things, but he allows stuff to happen. COVID-19 is, is, is what's got us out. Because Ephesians 6 and 12 said we're not fighting against flesh and blood. Basically, it's saying we're fighting against the devil. And the way we handle him is through prayer. So it's not God doing all this stuff. It's just he allowed something to come in here and all of this goes with what he allowed to come in. He's slowing us down. You can't even go, you can't just walk into Walmart no more. You got to get in the line. <laughs> Slow down. We don't have to rush like we used to because we ain't got to go to work. A lot of us. He's making us slow down. And I believe that once we acknowledge him, and do what he asks us to do, or at least work on it. He's not asking none of us to be, he's not asking none of us to be perfect. He know we all have sinned and come short of his glory. He know in all of our righteousness, we ain't nothing but filter rags. He know all of that. All he wants you to is to pray, turn to him, ask him to show you what you need to fix about yourself and start working on it. Some of it you already see. Some of it you already know where you need to be working on it, but we've got we've got lax in our in our state. That's not good, especially when we know we need to be striving to get better. I'm not perfect, long way from it, but you ain't gonna catch Jerry nowhere acting up too bad, because I have a Father in heaven and He will get me. But anyway, so much for that. See what else on these notes. I kind of got, got off of these notes. I told y'all. One other thing. God is starting this thing from the top to the bottom. All we done talked about tonight is start, starting at the top. Look at the Republicans and the Democrats. They ain't fighting like they was. They ain't got time for that right now. They got to see what we're going to do to get this economy back over. But they did. God, God did make them come together one time. He made them sign this stimulus package. They came together. That's a that's a hooray for me. At least they did it. So he's starting at the top and working his way down. So one other thing before I close, Pastor said said at least ten minutes. I done took up about twenty, but we are gonna hurry up and close this thing out. Give me about five more minutes, so probably less than that. We want to out of all the stuff been said. Okay, what we gonna do about it, Brother Jerry? I was reading my devotional about a, about a week ago, and it talked about prayer. And it came from Ephesians, the sixth chapter. And it came from, from verses 10, from 10 through 18. And I'm just going to briefly read a little bit, of, little bit of it for you. Ephesians 6 and 10. It's a finally, my brother, and this is Paul, letters to the church at Ephesus. And he's closing out his letter. He said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be to stand against the wiles of the devil or the tricks of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. And then I'm going to skip down to the last verse which is verse 18, and it say, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, too, with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. In a nutshell, Mr. Paul is telling us right here, he said, 
be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, how are we going to be strong? Then he goes on to say, put on the whole armor of God, where you can be able to stand against the wiles of the devil or the tricks of the enemy. Then he said, we're not fighting against flesh and blood. We're fighting against principalities and power, which is nothing but the devil. Then he goes on in them other verses to tell, tell, tell you to put on all these different parts of your armor. Your, your, your helmet, your breastplate, your shield, all of that. He tell you put, but then at that end, he tell you, how do I, he answers a question that I had. How do I put on all this armor? Through prayer. That's the way we put on this armor that he's telling us that we're going to have to have. We're going to have to have this armor that he's talking about if we're going to be in this, in this army. If we're going to be walking for God, we're going to have to put on this whole armor. We do it through prayer. And then it says that this armor is necessary during our spiritual walk with the Lord. It says, what do we get out of it? It provides protection, discernment, and confidence in his truth. We need that. We need protection right now from this virus out there. Who can protect us better than God? Nobody. We need discernment. When he tells you to put that mask on or to wash your hands or to go around this way from this person or to move, go to the left, we need to be able to be able to discern. We discern. We need to be able to hear his voice at this time. And then when we speak, we need to have confidence in what we say. How can we have confidence in what we say? Because we back it up with his word. I'm not going to tell you anything that I can't back up with his word some kind of way. And if I got this book backing me up, or if you got the book backing you up, then we should have confidence in his truth. Because he said faith without works is dead. Anyway, I think that's about all for tonight. Uh, thank God for the opportunity and thank God for all the ones that, that tuned in tonight. I hope something was said to help you to look at stuff in a different perspective now. It's not all bad. Slow down. Be safe. Try to do what they tell us to do. Stay in the house. Don't just keep running out. They said in, we're supposed to be in home. It's a law now. We need to work on that. Wash our hands and do what we know we're supposed to do. Pray and ask God to protect us. And that's all we can do because it's in his hands anyway. We're going to say a short prayer and then we're going we gonna to get off. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this opportunity, Lord. We just thank you and, 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 and we're coming in your son Jesus' name, praying that something was said that will help to shed light on something that some something somebody may have been going through tonight, our Father. Our Father, we just pray that you would just please continue to bless every home that is represented tonight. Our Father, we pray that you would just protect us, give us discernment, and then our Father, most of all, we pray that you would just give us a, give us a praying spirit, our Father. Yes, Help us to continue to pray because Paul said, it, said in his word that we need to be continual in prayer, Lord. We may not be able to say it out of our mouths every day, but we all day, all day, every day, but we can walk. We can walk the way you said we were supposed to walk. And if we walk the way you said we were supposed to walk, Lord, that would be a prayer in itself. So help us to lean, continue to lean and depend on you. Lord, we thank you right now for Dr. Williams and the WCM. We pray that you would just please continue to bless his ministry in a special way. And Lord, we thank you for every other church that is, that is, that is in your name. Our Father, we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. See y'all later. Bye. Thank y'all.